morning, everybody. It is Friday and it's day 19 of this daily language diary series. Just want to say that so many of you have said how this daily series has become part of your daily language learning routine. That makes me so happy. That was like the ultimate dream of this series. So I just want to say that if you haven't already and you're liking these videos, please do subscribe, like, and join the conversation in the wonderful community that is taking place in all the comments of these videos. It is just fantastic. All right, I've got the coffee. I think it's time for another daily question. Now, today's question actually comes from Lelouch, who is one of the most prolific and insightful commenters on this channel. To be fair, there are so many of you, but I always get really interesting insight from Lelouch, so I'm happy to answer this question today. Hey Robin, when do you stop using Anki when learning a language? Now, this question is short and sweet, but for me personally, it evokes a lot of really interesting thoughts. So back when the Polyglot community first really started taking hold online, and there were lots of people really starting to get behind this idea of learning lots of languages and that you can do so a lot more quickly and more effectively than you do in school. I think there was really a strong push to get away from learning languages how we do it in school typically. And I think primarily it was this idea of rote learning and learning these long lists of vocabulary like many of us will remember doing in school. Now with that, I think that flashcarding as an activity and the language learning method actually got a bit of a bad reputation because it does sort of remind us of how we would learn things in that school setting. And so over the years, although there are a lot more people online now sharing their own ways of learning languages, and I think there's a really good amount of diversity, which is great. I do still think that there's a fairly prominent idea that sort of flashcarding might be a kind of inferior method of learning languages. Or another form of that idea is that once you get to a certain stage learning a language, that flashcarding becomes kind of useless and you sort of graduate onto other activities where flashcarding is no longer necessary. Now, I'm not saying that that's what Lelouch was saying with this question, but it's really something that it made me think of and I wanted to really address the question through that lens. I also wanna mention that at the heart of this discussion, in my opinion, is this really powerful idea that learning a language is not a one size fits all solution. And I often discuss how if you're looking for the best language learning method for you, if you're looking for the most effective techniques and methods, I think you're asking the wrong question because this is so incredibly subjective and there are so many wonderful ways you can go about learning a language. But at the crux of that is what do you enjoy doing? I made a video once about the best method of learning a language for you, where I actually discussed that many of my favorite activities and the things that I personally engage in the most. Now, I once made a video about the best way to learn a language. And in that, I discussed how, honestly, many of my favorite language learning activities, many of the things I do where I feel the most excited, that I think are the most effective for me, they're actually not really aligned with some of the most popular advice you'll hear in this community. And in some cases, they're actually kind of opposite, but I'm still just as effective in learning languages as anybody else. And that's because I, over time, have created lots of my own sort of methods and techniques that fit well with the things that I like to do and the type of person that I am. And so with all that being said, I think that it's totally fair for someone to say that they don't personally enjoy flashcarding or they don't do it or that they don't find it to be enjoyable or any of those things. But just because one person doesn't like doing it, it does not mean that it's not an effective method for learning languages. And so I use flashcarding all the time and especially when you pair it with a good space-time repetition system, I think it can be an incredibly powerful technique. And Anki, which is the program that Lelouch asked about, is one of the most sort of long-standing and well-known applications that allows you to study either pre made decks or decks you've made yourself with this sort of space-time repetition that's very, very effective. Now, the main part of this question was, when do you stop using it? And that's why I said it kind of reminded me of this idea that at a certain point, you may sort of just graduate from that type of activity and maybe move on to other stuff. But the funny thing is, I never really 
officially stop using tools like Anki. I find that it sort of comes and goes in waves depending on what I'm doing at the time. So for example, if we look at languages where at one time, I think I could make a pretty good argument that I was a sort of C2 level, which are Japanese and French. If I were just sort of coasting along in those languages and really just sort of maintaining them, enjoying them, maybe I'm just simply reading books every now and again, watching movies, speaking with native speakers, then I wouldn't really be using Anki or any other flashcarding system during that time. However, if I then had a period where I said, you know what, I want to really, really focus down on learning all about the beautiful world of coffee. However, if I then said to myself, you know what, I'm really curious about the coffee industry in sort of Japan and certainly French speaking countries, and I now want to learn some really specialized vocabulary. I want to start diving in. I want to read books in French about the coffee industry. I would love to sort of dive in and read about the culture and history of coffee in Japan. And I would love to just really just dive into this world of coffee in the context of those languages. Then I'd happily use something like Anki to allow myself to consolidate all of the knowledge, all the vocabulary phrases, even just factual information that I learn over time in those languages. Now, another example is with Spanish. So I remember when I was living in Barcelona and I would say my Spanish was a pretty decent C1 at the time. I was already reading novels in Spanish and I was having an amazing time, but I was using programs like Anki to sort of consolidate my knowledge and to sort of keep track of the things I was learning from those novels. But during that time, I really wanted to improve my knowledge of Spanish idioms. There are so many just wonderful idioms in Spanish. One of my all time favorites is tirar la casa por la ventana, which means to sort of splash out. And I just love Love this image of throwing the house out of the window. But there are so many amazing expressions in Spanish and I really wanted to learn lots of them and activate those in my language repertoire so I could use them in natural conversations. And so again, I used tools such as Anki and Memorize to not only have a place to store and organize that information, but also to allow myself to continuously review it using space and repetition. And it worked really, really well. The other thing I love about flashcarding systems is that they're really helpful for organizing the things that you have learned. And they actually go hand in hand with my language learning activity tracking sheet. So I often talk about these beautiful tracking sheets that I create for every language. And it's so nice because I still have my old Le Petit Prince, Little Prince, Anki deck from like years ago. I believe it was 2014 when I did that. I have the original notebook where I took all my notes on that book and it's right there in my language activity tracking sheet. And so I can go back and at any point, let's say that my Spanish gets really rusty and I say, oh man, like I really need to refresh my Spanish. And unfortunately, I just can't remember all of those wonderful idioms that I once learned. Well, I can go to my Spanish activity tracking sheet. I can see exactly where it was when I learned all these. I can then go to my Anki deck where I had saved them and it's all right there for me. I can either just pick up where I left off or simply reset the progress on that deck and start over. Another wonderful example is that I still have my massive Anki deck that I created for a drama called Toshi Densetsu no Onna, Urban Legend Woman. And I went through and learned basically every single word, phrase, idiom, expression, including some pretty weird words and expressions about Japanese urban legends. And I put them in this Anki deck. And oh my God, that was one of the most pivotal periods of my language learning for Japanese. I literally learned thousands upon thousands of words and phrases and idioms. I was doing shadowing with that series. I was doing absolutely everything to just like rip that series apart and get every ounce of value I could from it. I still have that. It's still there. And so it just, it's so, it's both practically helpful and it's also just a nice way to document your journey learning these languages. So there you have it. The short answer here is that, first of all, I really find tools like Anki and other SRS flashcarding systems to be very, very helpful. They're not for everybody. So I'm not saying someone is wrong if they do say that for them, 
it's not a thing they like doing and they don't find it helpful for them. But that doesn't mean it's not a helpful system and something that many, many people get a lot of value from. And then to more directly answer the question, the answer is really never. I never fully stop using tools like that. Certainly as I get more and more advanced and more and more independent and to a point where I'm just really enjoying the language and maybe I'm just reading novels for pure pleasure. I may occasionally scribble down some notes if I really find, you see, even then I'll probably still have a little Enki deck sitting around where when I read an expression where I'm just like, oh, that's good. I. I love the way they phrase that. I, that's hilarious. Well, I want to capture that. I want to keep it somewhere. So I'll probably still crack open Anki and make a quick deck and I'll just have a little list of the 20 favorite phrases I picked up from reading Mes Amis, Mes Amours by Marc Lévy. I hope that was helpful. I would really love to know people's thoughts on this. And you know, I'm happy to do more videos talking about the specific ways that I use tools like Anki in some of my really cool tutorials that are coming out soon that are going to be pretty different than anything I've ever done before. All right, guys, happy Friday. I hope you have a great day. Go and learn something new in your language today and maybe even consider creating an Anki deck. Find a really cool topic like idioms in the language you're learning or something like that. And maybe consider how you might actually try utilizing tools like Anki to consolidate knowledge that you pick up and a nice way to document what you're doing. I'll see you back here tomorrow for another episode of the Daily Language Diary.